it really comes at a significant premium to the share price. Why does this deal make sense for Estella's? Thank you for asking. Um, uh, we have two strategic uh, purposes for this uh, transaction. Number one is to acquire Avacyn Capital Pego, or ACP, which Iberic Bio is developing for uh, geographic atrophy secondary to uh, age-related macular de uh, regeneration, uh, de degeneration, AMD. So um, it is under uh, review by the US FDA and um, you know, anticipated uh, to receive the approval August this year. This product, if approved, is going to be additional pillar for us to achieve the uh, goals we set in CSP Corporate Strategic Plan 2021 and probably um, you know, adding uh, our revenue growth uh, uh, for the sustainable growth after the patent expiry of the Extandia of prostate cancer drugs. And secondly, um, Iveric team has built a, an excellent capabilities in the ophthalmology area uh, that in uh, R&D research and development, and they are building the commercial team in the US uh, uh, and uh, you know, as well as the network uh, with the uh, academia, uh, key opinion leaders, and the patient advocacy groups. Mm. Astellas actually has a cell and gene therapy in the ophthalmology area, and these capabilities are going to accelerate and enhance uh, the, uh, uh, our programs. Right. So when it comes to the FDA approval itself, how confident are you that this will happen, as you say, by August? And how competitive are you expecting this drug to be in the market? Yes, and uh, of course it's early uh, to say you know our um, you know whether or not the US FDA is going to approve the drug, but we have a reasonable confidence that uh, they will um, you know come back to us uh, with the uh, August 19 date, and uh, it's going to be the second drug uh, in the geographic atrophy secondary to AMD. How much will this make up for the decline in sales that you're expecting to see when Extandi faces generic competition from 2027? Yes, so uh, we uh, foresee a blockbuster potential for ACP and uh, with the Fesolinitans and um, you know, PADCEP uh, we have in, uh, in our internal portfolio, uh, this is going to be the th you know, additional pillar uh, for, uh, um, uh, for sustainable growth after the uh, extended uh, loss of exclusivity. A lot of the focus both in R&D manufacturing as well as expanding market share has been quite global. Is there a particular market or a particular segment that is going to be a key priority to you going forward? Yes. You know, from a geography standpoint, now uh, more than 80% of our revenue comes from outside Japan, so we become truly global, and um, you know, around 40% comes from the United States. So um, you know, it is important that we address the U.S. marketplace. And uh, from the you know therapeutic area standpoint, we are taking the focus area approach, uh, which we uh, you know start from biology, combining modality, and uh, identify the unmet uh, medical needs. And we have five uh, of those primary focuses. Uh, one of them includes uh, immuno oncology, uh, targeted protein regulation for uh, you know oncology first, and um, you know cell and gene therapy and mitochondria uh, diseases. Uh, now, okay, you've seen a mixed uh, record when it comes to M&As. When it comes to growth going forward, will it be organic, or are you expecting to have more deals? I think uh, you know it is dependent on how our internal pipeline goes, but uh, we are always open uh, to acquiring uh, you know, attractive assets from outside. So um, you know we can't say whether we are you know doing M and A next year or ten years. Um, so uh, it is dependent on how uh, our pipeline as well as the external competitive landscape goes.